Hello, Mighty Companion. This is Earl Purdy, and I want to welcome you to Hardcore Course in Miracles. This is Hardcore Course in Miracles, <clears throat> especially geared toward Course in Miracles students and anybody that wants to watch. But I'm especially putting it out there for Course in Miracles students who are into the course. That's why I call it Hardcore Course in Miracles. I'm Earl Purdy. Welcome to Facebook Live. You are sinless, you are sinless, you are a child of God. You are sinless, you are sinless, loves you like you are. Your invulnerability was your father's guarantee that you would forever be. to Hardcore Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live. We're going to do honesty. We're going to talk about what the Course in Miracles means by honesty and being honest. On page 11 in the Manual for Teachers in the Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles. Page 11 in the Teacher's Manual, the section called Honesty. Oh yeah. Accept the ideas. You don't have to welcome the ideas, accept the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas you may find hard to believe. Some of the ideas you may find quite startling. You're not being asked to analyze the ideas. We're not going to analyze the ideas. We're going to use the ideas. The use of the ideas will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. The use of the ideas will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. The use of the ideas 
We'll give the ideas meaning to you and we'll show you that the ideas are true. Using the ideas will show you that the ideas are true. Using the ideas will show you that the ideas are true. So we're going to start out. I'm Earl Purdy. We're going to start out and we're going to do honesty this evening. I'm glad you're joining me. It's always a pleasure to have you. So the first thing I'm going to do is read through the section and then I'm going to go back through it and we're going to clarify the section. So honesty. All of the traits of God's teachers rest on trust. All other traits of love's teachers rest on trust. Once trust has been achieved, once what has been achieved? Once trust has been achieved, the other traits of love's teachers cannot fail to follow once trust has been achieved. Only the trusting can afford honesty, but only the trusting can see the value of honesty. Honesty does not apply only to what you say. Honesty actually means consistency. There is nothing you say that conflicts, there is nothing you say that contradicts what you think or do. No thought opposes any other thought. No act belies your word and no word lacks agreement with another. At no level, at no level, are the honest in conflict with themselves. Therefore, it's impossible for the truly honest to be in conflict with anyone or anything. The peace of mind, the peace of mind which the advanced teachers of God experience, the peace of, the peace of mind which the advanced teachers of love experience is largely due to their perfect honesty. It is only the wish to deceive that makes for war. No one at one with himself can even conceive of conflict. Conflict is the inevitable result of self-deception and self-deception is dishonesty. There is no challenge to a teacher of God. There is no challenge to a teacher of love. Challenge implies doubt and the trust on which God's teachers rest secure makes doubt impossible. Therefore, God's teachers, love's teachers, rest secure. Love's teachers can only succeed. God's teachers can only succeed. God's teachers can only succeed. Love's teachers can only succeed. Truth teachers can only succeed. In this, as in all things, the teachers of love, the teachers of God are honest. The teachers of God, the truly honest, can only succeed because the truly honest never do their will alone. The truly honest choose for all mankind. The truly honest choose for all the world. The truly honest choose for all things in the world. The truly honest choose for the unchanging and unchangeable beyond appearances. The truly honest choose for the child of God and the truly honest choose for the child of God's creator. How could the truly honest not succeed? The teachers of God who are the truly honest, they choose in perfect honesty sure of their choice as of themselves. So let's go back. As you know, I am about, I'm the divine remembering teacher. I'm the divine repetition teacher. And so my focus is on remembering what the Course in Miracles is saying, being able to hear what it's saying, and being able to apply it in your everyday life. I focus on the practicality of the Course but I don't analyze the course. So what is it that the Course of Miracles says honesty is? So what is honesty from a Course in Miracles perspective? It's so good to see my mighty companions online. I love you. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that we are going to go through this together. 
I'm glad that we see this as being important enough to come together live every week. And please share these videos. Please share these videos. Okay, so what do all the other traits of love's teachers rest on? All your traits as a teacher of love, all your traits as a demonstrator of God, all your traits as a demonstrator of love rest on trust. Everything rests on trust. The Course says that once that you have achieved trust, all the qualities, all the traits, all the characteristics of a demonstrator of love follow. So what's the most important thing? Trust. Trust is the most important thing. Trust is the most important thing in a relationship. Trust is the most important thing when it comes to truly being a demonstrator of love. Without trust, you don't really have a real relationship. So the next time you say you love somebody, realize that you are saying, I totally trust you. Love is trust. Trust is love. So it's no such thing as saying, I love you, but I don't trust you. There is no such thing as, I love you, but I don't trust you. So if you tell somebody you really love them, but you don't trust them, you don't really love them. Love and trust are the same thing. And when you look at it that way, you very quickly see how many people in your life you truly love. How many people in your life that you truly love is how many people in your life that you truly trust. And how many people in your life that you truly trust. How many people in your life do you totally trust? Those are the people that you truly love. If you do not trust, you are not loving. So the Course says only the trusting can afford honesty. Why is it that only the trusting can afford honesty? Because only someone that trusts can see the value of honesty. So it's only someone who trusts that sees the value of being honest. So what does that tell me? It tells me that when I do not trust, there's a good chance that I'm not going to be honest. If I don't trust our relationship, there's a good chance that I'm not going to be honest in our relationship. Where there is no trust, there is probably no honesty. Honesty does not apply only to what you say. So when we talk about so does that mean that when the Course in Miracles talks about honesty, that the Course in Miracles is not talking about what you say? It's not only talking about you being honest in what you say. When the Course in Miracles talks about honesty, it says the term actually means consistency. Honesty means consistency. Honesty means consistency. I want you to hear that. Honesty is the same as consistency. So honesty isn't just about what you say. Honesty is consistency. 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 So when you say you're honest, you're saying you are consistent. Being honest means that you are being that you are consistent. Honesty means what? What is it that honesty means? Honesty means consistency. So what does it mean to be honest? What does it mean to be consistent? If you are an honest person, there's nothing you say that contradicts what you think. You're never saying something that con that's the opposite of what you think. If you're an honest person, you consistently are not saying something that contradicts what you think. If you're honest, you're not saying something that contradicts what you do. When you're truly honest, you don't have a thought that opposes any other thought. Do you know that when you are truly honest, your actions do not belie your word? Do you know that if you are truly honest and consistently honest, there is not any word that you say that lacks agreement with another word. That's a truly honest person. At no level, at no level, is a truly honest person in conflict with themselves. So how can you tell when you are being dishonest with yourself, you feel fear and conflict? 
Do you know that fear and conflict means that you are being dishonest with yourself about something? If you feel fear or conflict or fear and conflict or anger and conflict and fear, then you are not truly honest. You're not truly being honest about something. Therefore, if a person is truly honest, at no level are they in conflict with themselves. It's impossible to be in conflict with yourself if you are being truly honest. Do you know it's impossible for you to be in conflict with yourself if you are being truly honest? Therefore, since you're not in conflict with yourself, it's impossible for you to be in conflict with anyone or anything. So if you are completely at peace within yourself, then you're going to be completely at peace with everything and everyone around you. If you are a truly honest person, at no level are you in conflict with yourself. If you are a truly honest person, do you know that at no level are you at conflict with anyone or anything? See, the thing I love about The Course of Miracles is that it keeps me from fooling myself and deceiving myself. It, it, it immediately teaches me how to tell where I'm really at as opposed to where I think I am. So let's go back. It says, number one, it says, it's only when you are truly trusting that you can afford to be honest. But do you know that being honest does not apply only to what you say? Being honest means that you are consistent. Honesty means consistency. What does that mean? It means that nothing you say contradicts what you think or do. It means that you don't have a thought that opposes any other thought. It, it means that there's no action that you do that belies your word. It means that no word lacks agreement with another. That's a truly honest person. That's the characteristic of a truly honest person. So at no level is a truly honest person in conflict with themselves. So does that mean that if a person is in conflict with themselves or anybody else, it means that they are not being truly honest? That is exactly what it means. When you finally are completely honest, you will know that you are completely honest because you will have no conflict at any level within yourself. So if you have any kind of conflict or fear within yourself, you're not completely honest yet with yourself. That's all. Doesn't mean you're sinful. Doesn't mean that you're bad. Doesn't mean that you are not loved by God and all that is. But you're not being honest with yourself. You're not being honest yet. So I know that I'm not completely honest yet because I do have some conflicts in some areas of myself. And I don't have to beat myself up about that. It just means I'm not being consistent completely. It means that that I'm saying something that may contradict what I think and what I do. It means that I have some thoughts that oppose each other. It means that I have words that don't agree with each other. It just means that I'm not consistently honest yet. Why? Because I have some form of conflict. You got that? You got that? <clears throat> okay. Paragraph two says, the peace of mind which the advanced teachers of God experience is largely due to their perfect honesty. So the Course in Miracles just told us where peace of mind comes from. If a person says that they want to be peaceful, then to be truly peaceful, to if you really want to have peace of mind, you have to be honest. If you, if you really want to have peace of mind, you have to consistently, consistently be honest. And what does it mean to be honest? It means there's nothing that you say that contradicts what you think or do. There's nothing that you say that contradicts what you think or do. There's no, there's no thought that opposes any other thought and your actions don't belie your words. That is the truly honest. So if you're being truly honest, that's where your peace of mind, that's where your true peace of mind is going to come from. Your true peace of mind is going to come from being perfectly honest and do you know that that means that your true peace of mind is going to come from being perfectly consistent in practicing the truth? Perfectly consistent in what you say, think, and do. So what is it that makes for war? What is it that makes for conflict? It says it's only the wish to deceive. So if I'm going through conflict, if I'm going through fear, 
then I'm, de I'm deceiving myself. I'm fooling myself some kind of way. Then it says, no one at one with himself can even conceive of conflict. So if I was really feeling one with myself, if I was really feeling connected with myself, if I was really feeling joined with myself, I couldn't even conceive of fear. I couldn't even conceive of conflict. I couldn't even conceive of guilt and anger and grievances if I really felt united and one and honest with myself. So don't you see what the Course in Miracles is doing? It's getting you out of denial. It's giving you an opportunity to get really, really, really honest with yourself so that you can finally have peace of mind because peace of mind comes from perfect honesty and perfect honesty is perfect consistency. And that means that there's nothing that you say that contradicts what you think or do. You don't have a thought that opposes any other thought. It means no act belies your word and it means no word lacks agreement with another. <clears throat> At that point, you would be one with yourself. The next sentence says, conflict is the inevitable result of self-deception. Notice how the Course in Miracles is saying the exact same thing, but it's saying the exact same thing a lot of different ways. That's why you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to understand any particular sentence in the Course in Miracles. I've been doing the Course in Miracles for almost 40 years. Let me tell you. If you don't get it one way, then the Course in Miracles is going to restate it another way until you get it. And that's why you don't need to focus in on any particular sentence that you don't understand. Listen to this. It says, conflict is the inevitable result of self-deception. If you deceive yourself, you're going to be in conflict. If you are deceiving yourself, you are in conflict. If you are deceiving yourself, you are in conflict. If you are in conflict, you are deceiving yourself. Wherever you're in conflict, that's where you're deceiving yourself. Self-deception is dishonest. So a dishonest person, would you say a dishonest person is a person that's deceiving themselves? So what's the most popular way the Course in Miracles says that we deceive ourselves? The Course in Miracles says that the way that we deceive ourselves is thinking that we are separate. We deceive ourselves when we think we're separate from each other. We deceive ourselves when we think we're separate from God. We deceive ourselves whenever we think we are sinful or guilty. We deceive ourselves whenever we think that we are a victim. We deceive ourselves whenever we think we are a body. We deceive ourselves whenever we think that we are anything other than love. When the Course in Miracles talks about deceiving ourselves, it's talking about us deceiving ourselves about being spiritual beings. The Course in Miracles is always talking at the level of perception. And do you know that the Course in Miracles is always talking at the level of your identity? Would you believe that the Course in Miracles says that all pain every, every, and every problem that you have is an identity problem? that if you really knew who you were, then you would never have a problem. You would never have conflict if you would never have fear. So if you are truly honest, if you are truly honest, which means there is nothing you say that contradicts what you think or do, no thought that you have opposes any other thought, no act belies your word, and no word lacks agreement with another, then you are a truly honest person. And the way that you can tell if you're a truly honest person is because you have peace of mind and you're not in conflict in any way with yourself or with anybody else. If you're truly honest, then you feel at one with yourself. And then in paragraph two, it says, there is no, <clears throat> there is no challenge to a teacher of love. There is no challenge to a teacher of God. A teacher is a demonstrator, and God is the creator. God is love. There is no challenge to a teacher of God. So how do you know if you're demonstrating love? According to the Course in Miracles, you know when you're demonstrating love, because when you're demonstrating love, you don't see any challenges. You don't have challenges. 
when you are a true demonstrator of truth. You do not have challenges when you're really honest. You do not have challenges when you are a true teacher of God. So what is our goal? Our goal is to become demonstrators of God, demonstrators of love. Our goal is to learn how to be honest. So don't beat yourself up if you don't have these advanced characteristics because the Choice and Miracle says it's rare at the beginning if anyone has the characteristics of a teacher of God. That is rare when someone's first trying to be a demonstrator of love that they are completely honest. So don't beat yourself up. You're where you should be as a beginner. Okay? I want you to hear that. You're where you should be. You're where you should be. It's just the Course in Miracles is telling us how to tell where we really are. So when I'm truly demonstrating love, when I'm a true teacher of God, when I'm truly honest, when I'm truly consistently practicing the truth, there will not be any challenges. There will not be any conflict or fear within me. And I won't be in conflict with anybody else either. Some people say, well, I want life to be a challenge. Well, great, you already succeeded because if you want to have challenges, challenges will be there for you to have. Nobody's trying to take your challenges away from you if you want challenges. Some people want peace more than they want challenges. Some people want total fulfillment, which is peace, more than they want challenges. They want to be demonstrators of light, love, joy, peace, abundance, health, happiness. They would rather do that than spend all their time dealing with blocks and obstacles and challenges. But if you want blocks and obstacles and challenges to overcome, voila, you will find a lot of them in your life and you should be thankful for each challenge that you have. But if you're truly being the teacher of God, if you're truly being a demonstrator of love, there is no challenge. Now, challenge implies doubt. If I think I have a challenge, that means I don't know if I'm going to succeed. So if I don't know if I'm going to succeed, that means I have doubt. Challenge implies doubt. Challenge implies doubt. And the trust... And the trust, on, on the, the, trust, the trust on which love's teachers rest secure makes doubt impossible. So what is it that will make it impossible for you to doubt? What is it that will make it impossible for you to doubt? The trust that you rest on. Your, your trust is in God. Your trust is in truth. Your trust is in love. Your trust is in your creator. Your trust is in spirit. And if you truly trust in God, it's impossible to doubt. If you truly trust in God, it's impossible to doubt. If you truly trust in God, it's impossible to doubt. If you truly trust in God, it's impossible to doubt. If you truly trust in God, it's impossible to doubt. If you if you truly trust in God, it's impossible to doubt. If you truly trust in God, it's impossible to doubt. If you truly trust in God, it's impossible to doubt. If you truly trust in God, it's impossible to doubt. If you truly trust in God, it's impossible to doubt. If you truly trust in love, it's impossible to doubt. If you truly trust in love, it's impossible to doubt. That's what the Course is saying. So if I have doubt, I'm not truly trusting God. If I have a lot of doubt, it means I'm not truly trusting the Creator. If I have a lot of doubt, it means I'm not what? It means I'm not truly trusting God. I'm not truly trusting love. I'm not truly trusting the Creator. So, if you are trusting God, if you're trusting the truth, it says, therefore, the teachers of God can only succeed. The demonstrators of love, those who are honest, can only succeed. In this, as in all things, the teachers of God are honest. In all things, the teachers of God, the demonstrators of God are honest. What does that mean? In all things, you are consistent in practicing the truth. If you're honest, there is nothing you say that contradicts what you think or do. No thought opposes any other thought if you're truly honest. No act belies your word. No word lacks agreement with another word. That's the way it, you are if you are truly honest. At no level are you in conflict with yourself. 
At no level are you in conflict with anyone or anything. You have complete peace of mind if you are truly honest. You don't deceive if you are truly honest. You feel totally at one with yourself if you are truly honest. And there's no challenge for you if you are truly honest. You totally trust if you're truly honest. If you're truly honest, you can only succeed. That's how you can tell if you have become truly honest. Remember I was talking about how the most important thing with the Course in Miracles is to hear what it's saying? And that most course, not a lot of Course in Miracles ne students never hear what the Course in Miracles is saying because they don't read the book, they don't study it, they don't repeat what it's saying to themselves over and over again. What happens a lot with Course in Miracles students is that they start to put their own definitions, their own meanings, and their own interpretations on the Course in Miracles. Do you know that many Course in Miracles students always try to fit the Course in Miracles into their own thought system instead of like just for a minute letting go of the way that they think and just try to see what it's saying, whether they agree with it or not. And so that's what I'm doing. I see my job as a messenger of God is just to deliver the message and to deliver the message as clearly as I possibly can and, show, and to show you that I'm working out of the book and that everything I'm saying to you is right on the page in front of you so you're not getting Earl Purdy's interpretation. What you're hearing is the Course in Miracles interpretation of the Course in Miracles. And that's very important. So now I know that I'm not, a, I'm not completely honest yet. And since I'm not completely honest yet, I understand why I still have some conflicts and I still have some fears. And do you know, I'm not going to beat myself up about that. I'm just going to turn to the Holy Spirit, my internal teacher, and ask the Holy Spirit's help in learning how to remove the blocks that keep me from being honest. I'm not going to be punished. I'm not going to be hurt. I don't have to, I don't have to beat myself up. I just need to ask for help. So let's go further. The teachers of God, it says they can only succeed. Why is it that a teacher of God can only succeed? Why is it that someone that is honest can only succeed? Because someone that's honest, somebody that's a true demonstrator of God, they never do their will alone. So if you're truly a demonstrator of love, it isn't just about your personal interests alone. If you're a true teacher of God, it isn't just about just what you want to the exclusion of everything and everybody else. If you're a true, honest demonstrator of love, you want to do what's best for everyone and everything. Do you know that if you are truly honest and a true demonstrator of love, you would never just want to do your will alone. You would not be going through the world acting like the purpose of everybody in the world is to serve you, to give you just what you want, to act out your scripts, to make you feel more special than anybody else, you, a true teacher of God would never have that attitude. A true teacher of God would never do their will alone. They would want for everyone what they would want for themselves. If I really want honesty, love, and peace for myself, I would want honesty, love, and peace for everybody else. If I want abundance and to know my abundance, I would want everybody to know their abundance. If I wanted a real loving relationship, I would want everyone to have a real loving relationship. If I want to know God, I would want everybody to know God. I would never do my will only, my will alone. Do you hear me? Mighty Companions Online, and I'm looking at all of you online, and I'm looking at your comments. Uh, I want you to know that I'm looking at your comments, and I want you to know that the fact that you're even watching this and listening to this means that you want to be a true teacher of God. You really want to be consistent and you really want to experience true honesty. So feel good about yourself for even letting yourself tune in to this broadcast or listen to this video or watch this video. So the Course in Miracles says, those who are truly honest can only succeed because they never do their will alone. What does it mean to never do your will alone? What does it mean to never do your will alone? Well, it tells you in the next sentence. The teacher of God, the teachers of God choose for all mankind. The teachers of love, those who are truly honest, 
choose for all the world. I, I'm going to choose for love and truth for all the world. I'm going to choose for love and truth and honesty for all mankind. I'm going to choose for love and light and joy and peace for all the world. I'm going to choose for love and light and joy and peace for all things in the world. I'm going to choose for light and joy and honesty and peace for whatever for whatever there is beyond what we can see. I, I want even the invisible realms to have light and joy and peace and love. I'm going to choose for the child of God. I'm going to, I'm going to choose that everything and everybody have peace and love. I'm going to decide that everything and everybody should have peace and love. I'm going to choose for everybody's creator. I'm going to choose for God for everybody. I'm going to choose for God for myself. And I'm also going to choose for God for everyone and everything in the world. So, uh, so a teacher of God, somebody that is truly honest, this is a person that chooses in perfect honesty, which is the same as perfect consistency. And you're going to choose for love with perfect consistency. You're going to choose for love with perfect consistency. And you're going to be as sure of your choice, which is for love and honesty and truth, as you are going to be sure of yourself. So an honest person chooses in perfect honesty, sure of their choice as of themselves. <clears throat> So what about tolerance? We're going to go to tolerance. What, so what does it mean to be tolerant? First, you, first you're going to become honest, which means you're going to become consistent. And what does honesty mean? It means that you're consistent and there's nothing you say that contradicts what you think or do. No thought opposes any other thought. If you're truly honest, it means no act belies your word. If you're truly honest, it means that no word lacks agreement with another word. If you're truly honest, it means that you're not in conflict with yourself at any level. If you're truly honest, do you know that it means that you cannot be in conflict with anyone or anything? Do you know that if you are truly honest, you have complete peace of mind? If you're truly honest, you don't wish to deceive or fool yourself or anybody else. If you're truly honest, do you know that that means you know that you are one with yourself? If you're truly honest, you don't feel like there are a bunch of challenges for you. If you're truly honest, you don't have any doubt because you trust in God, you trust in the Creator. If you're truly honest, you can only succeed because you are honest. And do you know if you are truly honest, you also only succeed because you never do your will alone because you start choosing for everybody's happiness and you choose for God for everybody. That's the way you would be when you really, really know BS have become truly honest. So that is the goal. You may not be able to do it right now, but that is the goal. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? So now we're going to go to tolerance. What is tolerance? What is tolerance? Thank you for being online, mighty companions. I'm glad you're communicating with yourself. I'm going to read tolerance right quick, and then we're going to go back through tolerance, and we're going to focus on what tolerance is. Here we go. God's teachers do not judge. To judge is to be dishonest. God's teachers do not judge. To judge is to be dishonest. For to judge is to assume a position you do not have. To judge is to assume a position you do not have. Judgment without self-deception is impossible. Do you hear me? Judgment without self-deception is impossible. Judgment implies that you have been deceived in your brothers. Did you hear me now? Judgment implies that you have been deceived in your brothers. How then can you not have been deceived in yourself? Judgment implies a lack of trust. Judgment implies a lack of trust. And trust remains the bedrock of God's whole thought system. 
I say trust becomes the bedrock of love's whole thought system. Let, let trust be lost and all your learning goes. Let trust be lost and all your learning goes. All of your learning goes when you don't have trust. Without judgment are all things equally acceptable. Without judgment are all things equally acceptable. For who could judge otherwise? Without judgment are all things equally acceptable. Without judgment, all men are brothers. Without judgment, all men are brothers. Without judgment, all of us are equals. Without judgment, are all of us equals. A Course in Miracles teaches that brothers means equals. Without judgment, all of men are brothers, for who is there that stands apart? Judgment destroys honesty. Say what? Judgment destroys honesty. And judgment shatters trust. Judgment destroys trust. No teacher of God can judge and hope to learn. No teacher of God can judge and hope to learn. No teacher of love and truth can judge and hope to learn. As long as you are always judging, you will not learn the truth because the truth is opposite to judgment. Okay, so let's go back and let's do tolerance. Okay, we did honesty. Let's take a look at tolerance. Let's take it line by line because we are doing what together, mighty companions, and I love how you all are communicating and talking to each other and sharing. Um, it's about remembering this. It's about remembering this. So I'm going to give you a quick test. How can you tell if you're honest? The way you can tell if you're honest is there's nothing that you say that contradicts what you think or do. No thought opposes any other thought. No act belies your word. No word lacks agreement with another. If you're truly honest, then you are not in conflict with yourself and you're not in conflict with anyone or anything else. If you're truly honest, you have peace of mind. If you're truly honest, you're not in conflict. If you're truly honest, you don't believe you have any challenges. If you're truly honest, then you trust in God. If you're truly honest, you can only succeed. If you are truly honest, you choose for love, for God, for everyone and everything. So next you go to tolerance. So if you're going to be a true teacher of God, you do not judge. What the Course says, that's the same as saying you will not be dishonest. So, so someone that judges is a dishonest person. A person that's judging, putting their judgments on someone else or even on themselves, any judgment other than it's love or a call for love, then you are not a demonstrator of love. You are, that person would not be a true demonstrator of God. If you judge, which means you are interpreting anything around you or anybody around you in any other way other than they are expressing love or a call for love, which is what the Course in Miracles says the Holy Spirit's judgment is. The, the Course teaches that the judgment of love would always be, what I'm looking at is either love right now or I'm looking at a call for love. What is murder? It's either love, it's a call for love, it's a call for help, it's a call for God. What is robbery? It's a call for love, a call for God, a call for help. What is disease? It's a call for love, a call for God, a call for help. What is our government? A call for love, a call for God, a call for help. So, so if you use the Holy Spirit's judgment, that's the only judgment that won't hurt you. And it says, God's teachers, a true demonstrator of love, does not judge. Because to judge is to be dishonest. So why are you being dishonest if you judge? Because you are not, uh, you are not supposed to be judging anyone. You are not a judge. So whenever you judge, he says you are assuming a position you don't have. 
In other words, judging people and judging things, that's not your job. Judging people and judging things, that is not your job. Judging things and judging people, that's not your job. So what is that saying? It's saying what makes you dishonest is that you are what? Assuming a position you don't have. That's not your position. You are here to be a demonstrator of love. You're not here to judge other people. You're here to be a demonstrator of love. You're not here to judge other people. And then the Course in Miracles says, judgment without self-deception is impossible. So why is it that you're going to deceive yourself if you're judging? You're going to deceive yourself if you're judging because you are assuming a position you don't have. That's what it means by you are fooling yourself. You are not, you're, you're not here to judge me. That You didn't create me. I didn't create you. So therefore, I, it is not my position to judge you and it's not your position to judge me. You didn't create me and I didn't create you. So the Course in Miracles says that's self-deception. Thinking that you are the judge that's what it means when it says you're being dishonest. That's what it means when it says you are deceiving yourself. Judgment implies that you've been deceived in your brothers. How can you then not have been deceived in yourself? Judgment implies a lack of trust. So how do I know when I'm judging? How do I know when I'm judging the people around me? How do I know that? I don't trust you. I don't trust. So if I'm, a tr so if I'm trusting, I'm judging. I must be seeing everything and everybody different from the way that God sees them. Because if I was seeing everything and everybody the way that love sees them, then I certainly would feel trust. I, I would certainly trust instead of judge. So the Course is telling me judgment implies a lack of trust. So how can I tell if I'm judging? I don't have true trust. But what is the bedrock? What is the foundation of a teacher of God? What is the foundation? of a teacher of love. The Course says, trust. Trust remains what? Trust remains the bedrock of the teacher of God's what? Whole way of thinking. So when I'm a true demonstrator of love, when I'm a true demonstrator of love, my trust in God, my trust in each other, my trust in my equals, that's gonna be the bedrock of the way that I think. When I'm truly being honest, when I'm truly being loving, when I'm truly demonstrating the truth, Trust will be the foundation of everything that I think. Everything I think is going to come from trust because I'm trusting in God. I'm trusting in love. And if I trust in God and truly trust in love, then there are no challenges. I can only succeed. So what is it that would cause a person to lose all of their learning? What is it that would cause a person to lose all of their learning? Letting trust be lost. So you cannot learn if you do not trust. You cannot learn if you do not trust. If you don't want to trust, you will not learn the truth of love. You have to want to trust. So the way, so the way that I look at it is, I'm either trusting you or wanting to trust you. Those are my two states of consciousness. I'm either trusting or I want to trust. I'm either trusting or I desire to trust. I'm either trusting or I need to learn how to trust. Those are the only two states of mind that I want to have. Either I love you or I want to love you. Either I trust you or I truly want to trust you. Because if I don't want to trust you, if I don't want to get in touch with the ability to trust, the Course in Miracles says all of my learning leaves me. Without judgment, what happens? What happens if you do not trust? I mean, excuse me, what happens if you do not judge? What happens when you stop judging? Well, the Course in Miracles says everything would be equally acceptable because if I'm not judging, then what would make one thing more acceptable than another thing unless I was judging? So if I didn't judge, then I could accept everything that's happening around me if I didn't judge it. So the Course in Miracles says if I don't judge you, if I don't see you as something other than love, if I don't see you as, if, if I don't judge you as something other than love, because the Course in Miracles teaches and God says that you are love and you are lovable and you are loving, that you are spirit. 
So if I see you as anything other than that, then I'm not going to accept you. I may not accept you. I may reject you. So the Course in Miracles says, without judgment are all men brothers. Because there's nobody to stand apart separate. If I'm not judging everybody is different, and I treat everybody the same, and I see everybody as being uh, love, and I see everybody as being spirit, and I see everybody as, as, as being a part of myself, then who would stand apart? One of the hardest concepts for, for my ego to get from A Course in Miracles is that love is inclusive, that true love includes everybody and true love loves everyone equally. 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 God loves everyone equally. So until we get to the point that we are radiating a love that includes everybody, we're not really radiating love truly yet. I'll say that again. Until we get to the point that we're in touch with the love that we are, which is a love that includes everyone, then we're not truly being honest yet. We are not truly going to be tolerant yet. Judgment destroys honesty. Judgment shatters trust. No teacher of God can judge and hope to learn. No teacher of God can judge. No demonstrator of love can judge and hope to learn. That's the same as saying no teacher of God can assume a position that they do not have, which is to be the judge and hope to learn. You are not the judge. You are not the judge. You are not the judge. That is not what you were hired to do, Earl. That is not what you were hired to do, mighty companion. Resign. Resign the position that no one ever put you in in the first place which is to judge others. And the Course in Miracles says, if you do that, then you will have true tolerance. If you do that, you will have true honesty. Okay, I'm going to do a quick recap in just a minute. I want to make sure that I heard what it said and what the points were. If you would like to make a financial expression of appreciation, if you would like to support the Earl Purdy Teaching Ministry, you find value in this and you're willing to support this teaching ministry, then you can go to my website, Earl Purdy, P-U-R-O-D-Y dot com, and you can make a financial expression of deep appreciation. If you like to use Venmo, you can use my email address, Earl Purdy at Earl Purdy dot com. There are hundreds of my classes on my website, earlperdy.com. You can sign up for my contact list at my website, earlperdy.com. So you'll be notified when I do online and in-person seminars and workshops, which are going to be coming up very soon. And also on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, I do Hardcore Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live on the, on the Earl Purdy page. Just do a search on that, Earl Purdy page, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. And on Sundays at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, I do another Course in Miracles class on Facebook Live before a live audience. And that's this Sunday at 1 o'clock. Please spread the word about that. And I'm also available. I'm an astrologer. I'm a numerologist. I'm a sole purpose astrologer and numerologist, as well as a counselor who uses the Course in Miracles and other metaphysical new thought teachings in personal sessions to help people get exactly what they truly want in their heart and to get past any kind of blocks and pain and limitation that they're ready to let go of. And also I could be used as a mentor and coach to help you really be able to practice this. If you would like to have one of my sessions called the Clarity Session, go to my website, earlpurdy.com and you will be able to find out all the details about my clarity sessions and you can book an appointment right there on the page. You can self book an appointment with me right from my website on my clarity session page. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here's the review. We are talking about honesty. 
How can you tell if you're honest? How can you tell if you're honest? Well, if you trust, you can be honest because if you trust that you're connected to source and that nothing can take away your connection to source, then you are going to trust. And since you're trusting, you're going to be honest. What does it mean to be honest? Well, being honest doesn't only apply to what you say. Being honest actually means that you're going to be consistent. Honesty, honesty means consistency. Honesty means consistency. Honesty means consistency. Honesty means consistency. There is nothing that you say. If you're really honest, there's nothing that you say that contradicts what you think or do. If you're truly honest, no thought opposes any other thought. If you're truly honest, no action belies your word. If you're truly honest, no word lacks agreement with any other. If you're truly honest, do you know that you're not in conflict in any way? You're not in conflict with yourself. You're not in conflict with anyone. And you're not in conflict with anything if you're being truly honest. If you have peace of mind, if you have true peace of mind, then that means that you are perfectly honest. Because when you have peace of mind, it means that you are perfectly honest. Also, if you are perfectly honest, you don't see yourself as having a bunch of challenges. Because if you're perfectly honest, you're trusting in God. And since you're trusting in God, it's impossible for you to doubt. <coughs> if you're truly honest, <coughs> If you're truly honest, do you know that you can only succeed? If you're truly honest, you are consistent and you can only succeed. If you're truly honest, do you know that that means you would never try to do your will alone? It means that you would choose for love, choose for God, choose for happiness for everybody and not just yourself, not just yourself. So how can you tell if you're tolerant? How do you become tolerant? Well, if you, are, if you want to be tolerant, you do not judge. Because if you are judging, it means that you are being dishonest. So what makes you dishonest if you are judging? If you're judging, you are assuming a role, a position that's not really your position. It is, it is God who should be doing the judging. And the Course in Miracles says, God judges this way. The Holy Spirit judges this way. According to the Course, the Holy Spirit says, this is either love, what's happening right now, or it's a call for love, a call for help, a call for God. That is the Holy Spirit's judgment. That is love's judgment. And if you're using anything other than love's judgment, then you are not honest. You are deceiving yourself. You are assuming a position that you don't have. A Course in Miracles says that if you're feeling judgment, you're deceived in others, which means you're deceived in yourself, that if you are a person that's judging, that you have a lack of trust, and that trust should be the bedrock of your whole way of thinking. It says if you let go of trust, which produces honesty, which produces tolerance, then it says all your learning, boop, it goes. So without judgment, everything would be equally acceptable because there wouldn't be anybody to judge otherwise. The Course in Miracles says judgment destroys honesty and shatters trust. Judgment destroys honesty and shatters trust. Judgment destroys honesty and shatters trust. Judgment destroys honesty. What? Judgment destroys honesty and shatters trust. What is judgment? You assuming a position that you do not have. Saying that your position is to judge everything and everyone around you. That's going to destroy your honesty it's going to shatter your ability to trust. No teacher of God can judge and hope to learn. No teacher of God can judge and hope to learn. You cannot judge, assume the position of the judge and hope to learn. No demonstrator of love can judge and hope to learn. 
And that is how you allow yourself to have honesty and tolerance. And so now, mighty companions, you know what honesty is and you know what tolerance is. You know the name of the game is repetition. The name of the game is remembering and repetition. Remembering and repetition. Remembering and repetition. That's the name of the game is to remember, is remember to remember repetition. Say this over and over again to yourself. That's what I was doing this last hour. Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. So the Course in Miracles will remove all obstacles. The Course in Miracles will remove all obstacles to your peace. Mighty Companions, I'm so glad that you did this with me. I'm so thankful that you did this with me and that we heard what honesty and what tolerance is. I want to see everything you do as love or call for love. I want all blocks to my being completely honest and consistent to be removed from my life so that I'm not in conflict in any way. Mighty companions, thank you so much. I will read every one of your comments and may the course be with you. I love you.